If you're subscribed to this channel, chances are you're a big fan of maps. And who could blame you? Maps are pretty great, and there are plenty of maps that will show you a lot about the world and its specific regions and countries. In this video, I'm going to take you through some of my favorite maps of the United States, one chart, and a couple of maps of the world as well, highlighting the similarities and differences between the country's different regions. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host, Carter. Today, some of the most fascinating maps of the United States that will change the way you see the country. With a presidential election underway, I'm going to start off this video with one of my personal favorites. If, like me, you're interested in politics as well as geography, I highly recommend that you check out an extremely detailed map of the 2016 election. This map was created by the New York Times, and as you can imagine by the name, is extremely detailed. Most maps that are created after presidential elections just show each state colored red or blue to indicate which candidate the majority of voters in it voted for, red for the Republican nominee and blue for the Democratic nominee. For a higher level of detail, some will show you how votes were cast by county, but the New York Times took it a step further, showing results by precinct, the polling location people went to to vote. This basically means that you can see how every neighborhood and community in the United States voted in the 2016 election. Now maps like this can be incredibly misleading. One look at it would make you think that Donald Trump swept the election, when in fact he lost the popular vote to Hillary Clinton but won the electoral college. The reason for this sea of red is that American political parties have a major urban-rural divide. Rural areas tend to vote Republican, but as you can see, despite being quite large, each precinct only has a couple hundred voters. Go to a city and you will see that the precincts tend to have a similar number of voters in each one to the rural areas, except they are much smaller, taking up only a few blocks. Urban areas around the country tend to vote for Democrats, meaning that elections are often very close, despite maps like this giving the false impression of a Republican landslide. Some maps take this into account by inflating states or counties based on their population or showing one dot for each vote. But as long as you keep in mind that for the most part, the Republican voting areas while large have less people and that the Democratic voting areas while small have more, this map can show you quite a lot. One of my favorite features is this one, which will take you to a random voter island, a place that supported one candidate, although everywhere around it, their opponent was more popular. Another interesting thing to look at are areas where the urban-rural divide does not hold true. In many cities, there are neighborhoods that voted Republican, sometimes due to the presence of a religious community, such as this precinct in Dallas, home to Dallas Baptist University, or a wealthier area, home to people who want lower taxes. I also found a couple precincts in Utah that voted for third-party candidate Evan McMullen, which is pretty interesting. If anyone can find any other third-party precincts on here, let me know. Now, from what I've seen, there aren't any cities overall that didn't vote less Republican than the rural areas around them, but there are some cases of rural areas that voted for Democrats. In some cases, this is tied to race. People of color tend to support Democrats at higher rates, and this can be seen in many parts of the country on this map. Native American reservations throughout the West are pockets of blue and otherwise staunchly Republican states, such as Montana and the Dakotas. The largest is the Navajo Nation, split between Arizona, Utah, and New Mexico, and larger than 10 different states. It makes up perhaps the largest patch of blue on this map outside of western Alaska. In the rural south as well, a region home to many black Americans, as well as southern Texas, home to many Latinos, you can see the impact of race on the election. In other rural areas, Democrats won big as well. Even outside of the Bay Area, much of California's coast in some areas quite sparsely populated, voted for Democrats. Vermont, a rural state home to Bernie Sanders, voted solidly Democratic, as did the rural western half of Massachusetts, just to the south. This map also makes clear the existence of battleground states. Trump secured the election due to narrow victories in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, and as you can see, these states are a light, light shade of red. Outside of Madison, Wisconsin, Democratic support seems to extend well beyond the urban area. If anyone lives in one of these rural areas that vote blue, 
I'm really curious to hear why you think these regions don't follow the urban-rural political divide that the rest of the country does. So leave a comment to let me know. The next map is a world map showing the world's religions. If you search something along the lines of a really detailed world religion map, you should be able to find it. There's a key in the upper left corner that tells you what each color represents, such as green for Islam, yellow for Buddhism, and orange for Hinduism. They've even broken down Christianity into red for Catholics, blue for Protestants, and purple for Orthodox. In the US, you can see the French influence in Louisiana, which is mostly Catholic despite the prevalence of Protestantism in the rest of the South. This map puts Mormons in the category of other religions, probably because despite widely being considered Christians, the LDS Church doesn't fall into either Catholicism or Protestantism, and because of this you can see the prevalence of Mormons in Utah and parts of Idaho. The Alaska Peninsula is actually predominantly Orthodox, which I'm guessing stems from their time as part of Russia, which is something that I did not know. Moving to other parts of the world, you can see that the Guyanas are incredibly religiously diverse, with different areas dominated by different religions, including indigenous faiths, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism. In Europe, the impact of communism is still obvious when looking at Germany. While the western half of Germany is predominantly Christian, the eastern half, along with the Czech Republic, is mostly atheist, as was the case in many communist countries. While Buddhism is mostly prevalent in Mongolia, Tibet, Japan, Taiwan, and Southeast Asia, one region in eastern Russia is a Buddhist enclave. Called Kalmykia, it's home to an ethnic group called the Kalmyks, whose ancestors moved there from Mongolia 400 years ago, and whose religious traditions have carried on. This is definitely a really interesting map to explore. The next map was made by someone named Neil Freeman, who redrew the United States into 50 states with the exact same population, 6.175 million people. This is pretty fun to look at, and does a good job I think at breaking up states on geographic and cultural regions as well, on top of picking state names that accurately reflect the region. As you can see, much of the inland west is broken into massive states, while other parts of the country include city-states like New York, which is split into three, Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, Miami, the Bay Area, and Atlanta. Other than politics, nothing gets people fired up quite like sports, and the New York Times has made some interactive maps of that as well. This is a map that analyzed Facebook posts to figure out which baseball teams Americans support, down to the zip code. In Connecticut, you can see a clear line that splits the state in half between fans of the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox, both based in neighboring states. In fact, the Yankees and Red Sox seem to be default favorites across the country, with the Yankees being the favorite team in states like Virginia, North Carolina, and New Mexico, and pockets of Red Sox support existing in Utah, Idaho, and Alaska. In fact, every state seems to be competing with support for the Red Sox and Yankees, although states without teams seem to look to their neighboring states, such as how the Dakotas root for the Minnesota Twins, Wyoming the Colorado Rockies, and Oregon the Seattle Mariners. Some other interesting trends visible on this map include how Florida, despite having two major league baseball teams, does not really root for either of them once you leave their respective cities. The Aleutian Islands of Alaska, for some reason, are San Francisco Giants fans, and Hawaii seems caught up in two different sports rivalries, the one between the Red Sox and Yankees, and between the Dodgers and Giants. If you enjoyed this one, the New York Times does the same thing with the NBA and college football, so if you like sports and you like geography, uh, you should definitely check those out. While we're on the subject of the New York Times, these interactive charts, while not a map, are really interesting. You can find a state, and it will show you where people born in that state have gone on to move to. There are definitely some clear trends. California and Florida are popular across the board, as well as moving to another state in the same region, as it color codes each state based on its location in either the west, the south, the midwest, or the northeast. You can also switch these charts to see where people who currently live in a specific state have moved from. It's just a really great way to see migration patterns between different states in the US. There are lots of different maps that show the largest employer in each state in the US. This one is by Business Insider, and it breaks it down into other public universities, 
hospitals, and retailers. By retailers, they basically just mean Walmart, which is the largest employer in 21 different states. Some interesting exceptions in the other category are Washington State, whose largest employer is Boeing, and Nevada, whose largest supplier is MGM, a company that owns many of the casinos on the Las Vegas Strip. There are some disagreements between the maps. This one by Olivet Nazarene University includes active military duty, which then becomes the largest employer in the Carolinas, Virginia, Alaska, Hawaii, Kentucky, Kansas, and Wyoming. On a similar note, MarketWatch makes a map that shows the largest company by market cap with its headquarters in a certain state. This is pretty interesting to look at as well, as there are plenty of recognizable companies such as Apple in California, Walmart in Arkansas, ExxonMobil in Texas, Coca-Cola in Georgia, Nike in Oregon, and so on. These two maps created by Thrillist show the popularity of different types of food across the US. This one called the Great American Burger Chain Map shows some clear regional differences between Americans' favorite burger joints, with In-N-Out dominating the West, Five Guys the South, Culver's the Upper Midwest, and so on. This map breaks it down by simply the type of food, and as you can see, it's pretty much all about Mexican food and pizza, with some exceptions here and there, like the popularity of sandwiches in New Jersey and Philadelphia. Going back to sports for a second, this map breaks up the US and Canada by each state, province, and territory's favorite sports team overall, regardless of the sport. There are some interesting examples of states rooting for teams from their neighboring states, such as how Nebraska, Iowa, and Indiana all join Illinois for their support for the Chicago Cubs. Interestingly, there are some states that root for an out-of-state team, even though the state that team is from mostly goes for another team. Some examples are West Virginia, who are fans of the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though Pennsylvania's favorite team overall is the Philadelphia Eagles, and Kansas, who roots for the Kansas City Royals, even though Missouri overall has more St. Louis Cardinals fans. This map shows the most common last name in every country on Earth, and groups them into categories based on what each name signifies, for example, a job, a town, or an ancestor. In some countries, you can see the imprint of colonialism. In Britain, the most common surname is Smith, and their former colonies of Canada, the United States, Australia, and New Zealand all have Smith as the most common last name as well. In Portugal, the most common last name is Silva, and in Brazil, it is Da Silva. There are also some neighboring countries that share the most common last name with one another without it having a colonial origin, such as North and South Korea, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, Germany and Switzerland, Malaysia and Singapore, and Italy and Monaco. Speaking of Italy, the most common last name there is Rossi, but the country has two independent countries nestled within it, San Marino and Vatican City. In San Marino, the most common last name is Gasparoni, which has Italian origin, but in Vatican City, it is Bachmann, which originates in Switzerland. The reason for this is that Vatican City is protected by the Swiss Guard, around 135 guards from Switzerland. Vatican City as a whole only has a population of 825, so the Swiss Guard makes up 16% of the entire country. People gain Vatican citizenship not by being born there, but by getting an appointment to a position high up in the Catholic Church, so Vatican citizens come from all over the world. Pope Francis, for example, is from Argentina. With that in mind, it makes sense that a plurality of people in this tiny city come from Switzerland, making a Swiss last name the most common, despite the country sitting in the heart of Italy's capital. One of the most interesting differences between different regions of the United States are how the use of and pronunciation of different words change based on what part of the country you live in. Business Insider made a list of 22 maps showing these linguistic differences, but I'll show you just a few of the highlights. This map shows what word people use to refer to drinks like Coke, Pepsi, and Sprite. In much of the Midwest, it's called pop. On the East and West Coasts, it's soda. The South just calls it Coke. So I guess if you live in the South, a Pepsi is a type of Coke. I wonder if that has anything to do with Coke, the company, originating in Atlanta. Another interesting thing in this map is that while much of the Midwest says pop, for whatever reason, Milwaukee and St. Louis overwhelmingly say soda. 
This one shows the split between whether you call it a water fountain or a drinking fountain, or I guess in Rhode Island and Wisconsin, a bubbler. This one shows a pretty stark split between sneakers and tennis shoes. And as I'm originally from Pennsylvania, I felt I had to include this map. Most Americans know of a type of sandwich that they call a sub, but in Pennsylvania, it's called a hoagie. I'm not sure where the difference comes from, but it has that name in both Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, which is interesting because the state actually has a lot of differences between the east and west. Each side of the state is anchored by a major city which sits very close to the state's edge, and Pennsylvanians have pretty strong pride for the specific side of the state that they live on. It's also divided by mountain range, putting the eastern side closer with east coast states like Delaware, New Jersey, and New York, and the western side closer to midwestern states like Ohio and West Virginia. Western Pennsylvania even has a unique enough accent and slang that it's considered to have its own dialect of English, known as Western Pennsylvania English or Pittsburghese. This map highlights the Eastern and Western divide in Pennsylvania pretty well. It shows locations of two Pennsylvania convenience stores, Sheets and Wawa, both of which are basically over the top convenience stores slash gas stations that harbor a fierce rivalry with one another. Blue is Wawa and red is Sheets. As you can see, there's basically no overlap with one another, and each of the stores basically stays out of the other's turf. Wawa dominates the eastern seaboard, and Sheets basically everything outside of Philadelphia. Wawa could try to open a location in Pittsburgh, but it probably would not get any business, and the same would be true with a Sheets in Philadelphia. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I definitely recommend that you check out some of these maps. Let me know what your favorite map was, and if you have any questions or video suggestions, please leave them in the comment below. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.